I have absolutely no doubt as to the gravity and seriousness of the actions of the Iranian regime and want to stand wholeheartedly with the women who have bravely protested for freedom. The examples I've just provided barely scrape the surface of the horrors of what is going on. My Lords, there's little we can do to influence the Iranian government, but what we can do is to raise our voices along with the countless voices of women around the world to show those who are fighting for these basic freedoms that they are not forgotten, that many people are standing in solidarity with them and that we will continue to highlight their plight. It is hard to believe that on March the 25th, 2022, Iran began a four-year term on the Commission of Women's Rights the UN's top women's rights body. And I want to go one stage further, if I may, than the Bishop. Commending the women for their bravery and courage is absolutely right. But, my Lords, it, it is just words. And, my Lords, talk in, is not enough. So let us act, and I think we can act. So can I ask my noble friend, the Minister, whether he can advise me whether it's the UK can take a lead at the UN and ensure that Iran is immediately suspended and removed as a member of the Commission on Women's Rights. It is impossible to understand how they can be on, so I urge the Minister to take it to the Department and let us lead, and this we can do. Will there be any additional targeted sanctions? Uh, uh, of any kind to show that the UK is a defender of human rights and freedom for all in society. So at some point we have to decide, with all, of our, with all of our decisions, I guess, in government, we have to decide if we want to protect economic gain, which in this case would mean abandoning the women, or if we want to protect democracy, and in this case that would mean supporting the women. Uh, the other point I wanted to ask, which is... Uh linked to a question that I asked in the Chamber a number of weeks ago with regards to the BBC Persian radio service. It is horrific that the BBC that staff and families of staff are being uh, persecuted, who are being harassed uh, by authorities within Iran, and the BBC itself is now under sanction as a criminal entity. That's unacceptable. But will the government provide a will make sure that there is no platform, radio or online, uh, which can be easily reduced uh, by the Iranian regime. I believe that emergency funding could be, should be made available to BBC World Service so that radio service and resilience can be provided. But I would urge uh, the noble Lord, the Minister, to explore uh, further options about how we hold the Iran, uh, Iran government to account. So, firstly, can the noble lord, the minister, update the House on steps taken at the UN to raise the recent violations? And, and what steps has the UK taken with our European partners since the joint statement on the 13th of October? And secondly, will the minister explain, as, the, uh, as illustrated by the noble lord, Lord Purvis, the government's decision to cut funding to the BBC Persian radio? At this vital moment, the United Kingdom should be standing by protesters, not eliminating a vital source of impartial information. The violence levelled at protesters in Iran by the security forces is truly shocking. The UK has joined the international community in swift and robust condemnation of Iran's actions. We have, as the noble Lord Bishop said, raised our voice. At the 51st session of the Human Rights Council, His Majesty's Ambassador Simon Manley called on Iran to carry out independent, transparent investigations into the circumstances of Marsha Amini's death. Our global human rights ambassador, Rita French, condemned the repression of women in Iran and the violence faced by Iranians who stand up for their fundamental right to freedom of expression. In total, the UK now maintains close to 300 sanctions designations against Iran in relation to human rights, nuclear proliferation and terrorism. In conclusion, my lords, the demonstrations following the death of Marsha Amini have left the world in awe. The courage of the Iranian people is striking. They have for too long lived under the threat of detention, violence or harassment for what they wear or how they express themselves. The people are speaking their truth to power. 
encapsulated in three powerful words, women, life and freedom. My Lord's universal human rights know not of geographical boundaries, so it is our hope that these demonstrations will lead to the advancement of human rights in Iran and safer, freer lives for the Iranian people. The UK position is clear. Through our words, our sanctions and our work with international partners, we will hold Iran to account and defend the rights of its people.